Yo, excuse this really bad lighting. I just moved to my new space and I don't have access to any light stand. So this is what you guys are gonna be seeing. So today in this video, I wanna bring you guys a really quick tutorial talking about three different adjustments that I do within the color grading process to help my footage just pop. Now today's video is gonna be sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about them a little bit later within this video, but I also wanna let you guys know that if you're interested for an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video, all you gotta do is drop a comment or a question down in the comment section. Let's get into it. So today's video, I'm gonna be using Final Cut Pro 10, but if you use Adobe Premiere Pro, it's gonna be an alternative to pretty much every single thing that I'm gonna say in this video, and I'll make sure to highlight on the screen the different alternatives and where to find the different adjustments and effects within Adobe Premiere Pro to help you guys out. Another thing that I wanna let you guys know is that in Final Cut Pro 10, I'm gonna be using a plugin, an external plugin called Color Finale Pro. If you guys use Final Cut Pro 10 and you don't have Color Finale Pro, I highly recommend you guys go pick it up. It's gonna unlock a lot of different potential within your color grading and give you different adjustments that you wouldn't be able to just solely do within Final Cut Pro 10. So here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. I have a clip. I've already gone through and done simple tonal adjustments, different white balance adjustments, just to color correct and get this to a pretty close standard image. Now, the first adjustment that I'm gonna be talking about that I use all the time within my color grading process, I guess you can call it an effect. It's not really an adjustment, it's masks. And I know that that sounds crazy because you use masks for so many other things like transitions and effects, but masks really play a crucial part in my color grading process. So the main reason that I use masks within color grading is to separate different color channels within an image. For instance, if I'm doing skin tone adjustments for a video, it's gonna be hard for me to just solely see skin tone ranges within the vector scopes. Uh, when I'm looking at the entire image. But if I use a mask and just solely focus on skin tones, it makes it really easy for me to adjust and make those pop within the video. So for starters, let's just head over to our effects and we're gonna search masks and we're gonna drop the draw mask onto our clip. Now, if you hover over the video clip, you're gonna see that the pen tool pops up. Just use this to go over a person's face, a person's arm. Just make sure you're able to highlight and only highlight the skin tone within the video clip. Close that off and you guys can see that this is all you get. And if we head over to our vector scope, you can see that this is the only color channel that's being represented within the vector scope, which is awesome and it makes it really easy for us to adjust our skin tones. And this is gonna make a lot more sense once we get to the next adjustment. Now the next adjustment that I use all the time in my color grading process is luminosity. A lot of people don't know this, but a little bit of luminosity adjustments within your color grading really makes skin tones pop. So let's turn this mask off and I'm gonna drop the color finale. Uh, onto my video clip. If you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, just head over to your Lumetri color panel, go to your curves and expand your hue saturation curves and you'll see the adjustments that are gonna be similar to what I'm about to talk about. So if we head over to open our controls, we're just gonna add on the six vectors to our effects panel. And you guys can see it's gonna show us a bunch of different colors that represent the color ranges within the image that we're gonna be color grading. So skin tones tend to lie between the yellow and red color range. So I'm just gonna use yellow and red and I'm just gonna slightly drop down the luminosity and I want you guys to pay attention to what it does to the skin tones. So I'm gonna head over to red and I'm just gonna slightly drop it down. As you guys can see, it's just making the colors so rich. The colors just pop within skin tones. And I'm just gonna drop the yellow down just a tad bit as well. And we can even take this a step further by using an adjustment that I was talking about previously, the mask. So if we turn on the mass and we head over to our vector scope we can see that the skin tone range within the image is kind of leaning a little bit towards the yellow side so i'm just going to use my hue adjustments to kind of straighten that up and get it closer to this line that's represented for skin tones so for red i'm going to adjust the hue just a little bit to the right and i'm going to adjust the yellow to the right just a little bit as well I'm gonna take the magenta hue and I'm also gonna shift that a little bit to the left because it's casting more of a blue tone on the skin. And if we take the draw mask off and we look at it now, as opposed to what it looked like before, you guys can see that it was leaning a little bit more towards the yellow side. So a little bit of luminosity adjustments, a little bit of hue adjustments included with the mask is gonna help you guys really get your skin tones to punch a lot within your color grading. Now, before we get into this final adjustment, I wanna give a shout out to Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online platform with thousands of courses to help you learn about photography, videography, and tons of other creative fields. Ironically, Skillshare has a handful of courses just about the color grading process in itself. So for the people out there who are interested in sharpening their creative skills, skills, 
It's going to be a link down in the description that's going to give you guys the first two months for completely free on the Skillshare platform. So if you're interested, you want to take your creativity and your learning to the next level, make sure you guys head over to that link in the description, sign up for Skillshare and get your first two months for completely free. Now, the last adjustment that I use all the time to get my footage to pop is curves. Now, I know you guys have seen curves all over the place. I know you guys have seen a ton of videos about curves. I'm going to skip over the boring stuff about curves and I'm just going to show you guys three different adjustments that I use on a regular to help my footage pop. So for starters, let's just add a curve to this adjustment. And I'm going to take off the vectors for the sake of what I'm doing so you guys can see it as standard as possible. I'm going to add on the curves. Now, it's three different adjustments that I use on the regular. The first one is a simple S curve, and this is probably the simplest and the most common one that you guys have heard about. So for you guys to achieve and do an S curve for your footage, you're just going to add a point here and you're going to add a point here. You're going to bring your shadows down slightly and you're going to bring your highlights up slightly. And it's just going to give you guys a unique contrast bump for your footage. So before, after, and it's just a simple S curve. A simple S curve can take your footage from being flat to being contrasty and cinematic instantly. And the next adjustment that I do on curves all the time is just a simple faded film simulation. And this is so simple to achieve, but it gives your footage such a unique look depending on the look that you're trying to push for a video. So to do a simple faded film look, we're just gonna add a point here, add a point here, and we're gonna lift our blacks point up a little bit. Drag our shadows point just down a little bit. And as you guys can see, this is just how you get that simple faded film look. But this is really simple to overdo, so I would just say do it subtly. Something that's going to add to when you want to give off that vintage look for your footage. And the third and final adjustment that I do all the time within the curves panel is just a simple mid-tone bump. So if we add a point here, we add a point here, and we add a point here, all we're going to have to do is grab this middle point and drag it to the left and up a little bit, and it's going to make all the tones within the mid-tone range just pop with contrast. So if you're looking for a mid-tone contrast bump, but you don't really want to affect the whites and the blacks within the image, this is going to be a really easy trick for you guys to get those mid-tones to pop within the image. And that's pretty much it. Before we get out of here, I want to read a couple questions and comments from our previous video. The first comment comes from Android Tech, and they ask, what is your favorite gimbal? Love your vids, bro. Keep it up. Appreciate it, man. My favorite gimbal has to be the Ronin M. It's unbeaten. This is just the gimbal that I've been using for years at this point. I just enjoy I like the form factor and also I feel like the stability it provides for footage is like unmatched with all the other single-handed gimbals in my personal opinion. I just love it. The next comment comes from Mo250 and they say, do you delete all music video footage once you're done editing and releasing a video but keep the final video on your hard drive? So me, I keep all footage. I try to keep all my vlog footage, all my YouTube videos, all my music videos. I just have like hard drive stacked from the floor to the ceiling at this point. I try to keep everything. The next comment comes from Ryan Lawless and they say, I don't shoot videos or consider myself a filmmaker, but I always enjoy your videos and your opinions on the process of creating and the gear that's out there. Appreciate that a lot, man. I'm like that with a lot of other YouTubers as well. Certain like fashion YouTubers that I don't necessarily see myself in the fashion scene a lot, but I watch all of their videos and I watch a bunch of stuff on YouTube that I'm not even relatively interested in. I just think that it's cool and I like to hear people talk about what they like. So I think that's dope, man. I really appreciate it. The next comment comes from Optimo Shack Films and they say, who helps shoot your footage? Uh, a bunch of different people. Most of the time it's Direct Latino, uh, Creative Ryan. Sometimes it's my fiance. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, man. I just get whoever can help me to help. The next comment comes from 10 100 Media and they say, hey YC, what are the top three things you would say is key to building YouTube? I'm guessing consistency tags and searchable content, but is there more to this? I think the top three things to achieve success on YouTube would definitely be one, consistency for sure. Um, two, I think you're spot on with creating searchable content. YouTube is a search engine, so you have to create something that people are going to be able to find through the search engine. But I feel like three will probably be a personality thing. Personally, I think anyways. Uh, think about how many videos you watch on YouTube, but you never hit that subscribe button. Like what makes you hit subscribe and not subscribe? Um, so I think that a personality is definitely going to add a lot to somebody who's trying to succeed in the YouTube space. The next comment comes from C. Sanchez Films and they say awesome video. Thanks, man. I appreciate that a lot. The next comment comes from Art Lab Inc. Professional Imaging and they say, do you think the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is great for weddings? 
uh, I think it would create some really good quality uh, video footage, but I don't think that it would be the most convenient thing to use for uh, weddings. The battery life, uh, no autofocus, things like that are something that really matter within the wedding space, I would believe. And that's pretty much it, man. I appreciate you guys for checking out this video. Make sure to drop a comment down in the comment section. Uh, drop this a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here to the channel. I'm out, guys. Peace.